Yo, 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 what is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Max and Juan cast. We're doing it via StreamYard, all right? We're premiering this. Finally, we're getting to our NFL preview. Today, we're going to be doing AFC edition. And as always, I got my co-host. What's up, bro? It's fucking good to be back. First curse word, 10 <laughs> seconds of the pod. I but they've been the seeing us. Right curse. They've been, look, look, they've been seeing us. You guys have been seeing all of our top 10 editions. So they haven't missed the beat, bro. But us in the real life, bro, we've been gone for a while. All right. We went on vacay. We went on a little bit MIA as far as us recording, but we're back. I ghost. I was ghost. <laughs> But look, man, like I said, we're going to be doing AFC edition today. So just to spare you guys some time, we're going to be talking about contenders, players that we feel like that that are going to break out, players that are going to regress, some awards, some rookie talk, everything about the AFC, bro. We're we're not going to talk every single team. Sorry, Jaguar fans out there. No, no, no. We will say (laughs) at least one sentence about every team. At least <laughs> yeah, one. why not? Why not? Yeah. All right, you All said right. Jaguars. We're good. Let's go. <laughs> there we go. Jaguars are done. But look, we can't get the the podcast started, Max, without the intro. So let me go ahead and play that for them. Oh boy, man! It's gonna be a tough year for the Eagles. I don't think we ain't gonna be seeing no big this plays is the like that. AFC dickhead, <laughs> and that was a dot. <laughs> hey, hey, but let's look, see, let's just go to the Raiders. Let's get them out right now. You want to talk Raiders? All let's right, go. let's go AFC let's West. Go. I think that's AFC a good West. place to let's start. Go. Let's All go. Right. So AFC West, we got the Raiders, we got the Chiefs, we got the Chargers, and we got the Bronc Hoes. All right. Um. <laughs> I think it's it's fair to say the Chiefs are top dogs going into the season. I think even though Tampa Bay won the Super Bowl, obviously, last year and beat them, they revamped their whole offense. They got some new offensive linemen in there. They got Orlando Brown, uh, a couple other guys that they got in free agency. They still got Reek, and they still got the best quarterback in the league, Patrick Mahomes. So what are the question marks, Max? that Kansas city has going into the season. Like what, what, where are the, the, Oh my God, like this is why they're not going to, going to get back there or they're going to have a bad season. Like, is there anything? I think it's a little bit uh, just too much. It's like how many teams really go to four Super Bowls in a row. I know they've only gone to two, but just think about it. The first year with Mahomes, what do they do? NFC championship game. Uh, mm-hmm. Frank Clark F no, it was D Ford. D Ford fucked it all up. Yeah, he was offsides. Should have gone to Super Bowl. And then two Super Bowls in a row. There's going to be the fourth one. That's a lot of football. The defense is still full yeah. of question marks. I don't really see anybody. Like, they got your boy Nick Bolton, who we both didn't like. <laughs> like I know Tyron Matthew, Juan Thornhill, Chris Jones is cool. But I'm just not sold on the defense. And I know it's they're not a defensive team. They're never going to, like, win a game 10-0, right, or 10-7. Right. They're yeah. about putting up numbers. And you talked about this. You talked about the O-line. Orlando Brown, that's a great trade. That was smart. They got Kyle Long out of retirement. They signed the best guard in free agency, Joe Thune. That's big. And they drafted Creed Humphrey. They got a, a Duvernay uh, Tardif back. Yeah. I, I like I like it. But honestly, this isn't – this is going to sound crazy. I'm not trying to say no hot take. This isn't my favorite team to win the division. I think there's going to be a team that, like – kind of comes out of the woodworks on them. Wow. I mean, that's the Raiders. <laughs> Look, I think that one of the biggest things that no one's really talking about with this team is their, their second receiver, Miko Hardman. That's your boy. Miko. That's your boy. Miko. Miko. That's your boy. Look, I don't know if he's going to have a breakout year or a bad year. I, it's kind of hard to position it because 
he's kind of not really a possession receiver. He's not really your typical like deep threat. I feel like he's kind of like a Tyree kill. Yeah, because yeah, because he needs the ball in his hands. I feel like he like a running back. He a gadget guy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But as you know, Travis Kelsey, Tyree kill, uh, Clyde Edwards. A lot of fantasy owners. A lot of fantasy owners are expecting a big year from him because of the revamped offensive line. So maybe the Chiefs can actually run the ball, but. How long have you been watching Andy Reid, bro? Exactly. When does he give a shit to run the ball? Right. I know the pass game might be better with him. This, like, honestly, I've been kind of underwhelmed by the screen game in Kansas City for like a while. Right. Like the wide receiver screens are cool. They have, but it's like, where's the running backs? Get the running backs out in the flat. Get them the ball. You kind of got to make it easier on Patrick Mahomes, and yeah. they got a pass block a hell of a lot better last year. They only gave up. Let's see, uh, twenty four sacks. They were fifth in the NFL. I think that shit's bull crap. Like I thought their protection was way worse. Yeah. Let's look at their schedule. So they start off week one against the Cleveland Browns. I mean, that's that's a tough stretch. You just look at their stretch week one to week three. What about it's, week four? Look, yeah, let, let's not talk about that. <laughs> but look, <Wait>, first, <laughs> first three weeks, they gotta go against Cleveland, Baltimore, and the Chargers. And you were talking. That's the bad part of the schedule. I think week five through nine, Buffalo football team, Tennessee, the Giants, and Green Bay. I'll throw in week 10, the Raiders. Oh, okay. (laughs) But like, just. I really think it's going to be tough. I mean, just to start off, the the Chiefs can easily start off, what, two and three to start the season? Because look, they play Buffalo week five. So the first five games Browns, Ravens, Chargers, Eagles, Bills. You you have to like. There's no way they're gonna start off five and zero. Oh. And the Chiefs are notorious for starting off hot. I mean, is there really no way they start off five and zero? Oh? I don't think so. No way. Like you have to expect a loss by either the Bills or the Ravens at least. They're like or, those are gonna or be the divisional game and the Chargers. And I mean, maybe this is a good way for me to segue. I think the Chargers might be the best team in this division. Mm-hmm. I really think so. I mean, I'm talent wise. I just like I like Herbert. I like like they went eight, seven and nine last year, and they lost six games because their head coach is stupid. Yeah, but like, you talked about it, like Keenan Allen taking him out the game. Why? <laughs> yeah, Why? yeah. But look, they have question marks on defense with Derwin James. They have an old corner and Chris Harris. Like both of those guys can easily get hurt and be out for the year. It's not crazy to think. No, but the o- on the offensive side, years. but look on the offensive side, you're you're 100 right, Max. M- Mike Williams contract year to remind you guys, you know how dudes like to play on their contract year, so he might be the second coming of Megatron this year. They got like you said, Keenan Allen. I like Austin Eckler; he can do a little bit of everything. And then, like you said, Justin Herbert. I mean, what's not to like about this guy? Last year he he was he was playing with like garbage out there at times because the coach was purposely trying to tank at times. So we'll see how they do. For me, what scares what scares me for the Chargers is have you seen their kicking situation? Yeah, it's 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 not it's not conducive. <laughs> well, Bagley got cut. Right? That's the Chargers, though, right? That's what I'm saying. Are they going to pull, like, are they going to pull some Charger shit? Because these are the Chargers we're talking about. Having, like, the first overall offense and defense, but you just are so bad (laughs) in special teams, you don't make the playoffs. Yes. I I hope not. not I'm trying to not sound like a Charger hater, but go on. I'm not trying like you're kind of talking me out of it, but I'm not going to I'm not that easy. And the t- the first part of their schedule is tough weeks one through six. We got Washington, Dallas, Chiefs, uh, Raiders, uh, uh, Cleveland Browns <laughs> and the Ravens and then a bye and then New England and then Philadelphia free win. It's a tough start. And I think for a young team with a rookie head coach, it's important to get off to a good start. If they can go four and two. I'm yeah. really liking the Chargers. To me, it's not it's not necessarily if they go four and two. If they go three and three and it's hard fought games all six, you never yeah. want to see a team get blown out. Like that's the worst thing for a team, I feel like. Right. And look, it, 
talking about injuries with this team, I think a lot of these guys are just injury prone that they have on their team. You look at a guy like Mike Williams, he's injury prone. Yeah. Uh, Brian Bulaga, he's known to get hurt. Linval Derwin. Joseph. Uh, yeah, Derwin James, like we said. What about Joey Bosa? Joey Bosa also. Linval jo- up. Yeah, Linval Joseph is getting old. Chris Harris is old. Michael Davis. Uh, one, one guy that, that a lot of people are looking at are two guys that I've been hearing out of their camp, Ray Sean Slater, a guy that we weren't high on in the draft and Asante Samuel. I've been looking pretty solid for them. Those are two rookies that are starting on offense and defense. So we'll see where it goes from there, but you can easily see this team like just not meeting expectations. You look at their head coach, Brandon Staley. He had the number one defense last year. There's nowhere to really go but down. You don't really expect the Chargers to have the number one defense going into his first year, do you? No, they don't have the best defensive player and the second best defensive player maybe for your money. You know, they don't got Jalen. They don't got Donald. They got Bosa. They got Derwin. And Derwin right now, huge question mark. Not about the talent; it's about the health. You can't, yeah. you can't be good if you never play. Right, and he ain't played in two years, basically. Yeah, but that's just us being on the negative side. Like, like me and Max said, especially Max. There, certainly, you can see why people are very high on this team. Can I ask a question real quick before we move on? Yes. What What do you think Herbert's going to do this year? Because I feel like so much rides with Herbert and. Being from LA like we are, they're running a lot of Herbert commercials. They're really pushing Herbert. And people yeah. outside of LA might not know this. The Chargers don't matter here. I've been to games, <laughs> you've been to games. It's 80% the other team. Yeah. Like they play 17 on the road every year. Right. It's a joke. And I feel they like just if they sold can capture something, this it might help them. They just sold the most uh season tickets this year. So that just goes to show you. Get a quarterback like Herbert and you got something working. So maybe tr- things are going up for the Chargers. Look, they're still the Chargers, though, at the end of the day. That's that's the way I see them. One guy I wanted to bring up before we move on to, to the Raiders and Broncos for a little bit, Joe Lombardi. I, I really like him as a play caller. I think he's really good for Justin Herbert. You look at what he did with Anthony Lynn, and I know Anthony Lynn wasn't calling the majority of the plays all year, but – I don't see Lynn as like a big time play caller. You should say, uh, I really like Joe Lombardi though. Um, I think that's really good for Herbert also. Wasn't he in new Orleans for a while and, or Detroit? I think he was with Detroit, Detroit when they had Megatron. Yeah. And Detroit. The passing game was always great. Yeah. Now they need to have a little bit more of a run game. So. Yeah. I well, like that's just Detroit man. for you. But I mean, yeah. you look at you look at Detroit, you always accounted for Marvin Jones or Galladay to go off for like 120 yards. Oh, it hell seemed like yeah. The, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Do you want to go Raiders or, or Broncos first? How about we go with the team that's worse in the division? Broncos. Oh, we're going with the Raiders. Oh. Come on. <laughs> no, let's go with the Broncos. Let's go with Teddy B. And we didn't yeah. talk in Teddy Pendergrass. We're talking about Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. What a safe pick, bro. I really like yeah. that. I really like that you have no was, balls to start Drew Locke. That's I was hoping I was hoping they went with Drew Locke, though. I think they Why? made the they made the right decision. Drew Locke ain't shit, bro. I don't care about bro. the stupid 80 yard pass in preseason because preseason is so damn important. Wouldn't you rather have a guy that at least gives you a chance to win? Yeah, exactly. And I think sometimes teams that are built like the Broncos how it's you got a bunch of weapons you got an amazing defense that's another thing I've been hearing out of camp that the Broncos are probably going to have the best pass defense in the league with all those damn corners that they have but that's what you want you want a guy like Teddy Bridgewater to not fuck it up don't turn over the ball yeah is he probably not gonna elevate your offense to the point where Everyone's getting a thousand yards everywhere. No, but he, they're going to play defense. They're going to try to run the ball. And Teddy Bridgewater is not going to turn over the ball at the least. Uh, but Drew Locke is just not. He's not the dude, bro. He is. You're not that guy, pal. I don't care what anyone says. I've seen enough last year. They made the right decision. I was hoping they made the wrong one. 
but th- they'll be fine. I I think they'll win at least seven to eight games. In all honesty, I don't like Teddy, bro. I'm I I would rather them start Drew Lock just for a couple games. At least see what you got. Here's what I, I know: Drew Lock's kind of a known quantity. But if they're in a close game with Teddy Bridgewater, you're gonna lose it. He went one and six, I think, with Carolina last year in close games, or zero oh and seven, something crazy. Like he's not the guy either. They still yeah. have a huge question mark quarterback. I don't think the defense is all that great to write home about. I know they got Von Miller coming back, Bradley Chubb. Vaughn's kind of on the way out. Bradley Chubb's never been special to me. And I'm like I said, I'm not a big fan of Sertain. We both talked about it. I don't think you were the biggest fan of Sertain. No, not I, just, I think he's gonna be good, but I didn't think he was the best corner in the class. I think he's really solid. And I, I think Justin Simmons is just a hair overrated for my money. Like I don't think he his impact is great. I think he's really good. I, I think the Broncos are the worst team. I think they're worse than the Raiders. I feel like the defense isn't that special anymore. Yeah, and at least the Raiders have an amazing offense. I mean, everybody retract. Not amazing, but very good. Yeah, well, I I think the Raiders are going to be a top ten offense, and I think people need to realize that really quickly by by like week three or four. I think it's going to well, be. Do you think Carr's the problem still? No, I think Carr's the worst of our problems. The obvious <laughs> problem is the defense. Our uh, our defense is going to suck, and that's why we're not going to be that good. Hopefully, these second year guys, like I always say, with the Raiders come out and they get better. Trayvon Mullen, Damon Arnett, uh, Jonathan Abram, Max Crosby, players like this, they need to improve. They need to take that next leap or else the Raiders are just not, not they're not going to be good. You're not going to be good in the AFC if you don't have somewhat of a defense. The best defenses out there get tortured at times by Patrick Mahomes. What makes you think when you have a bad defense? You know, that's just, you have to have one. Let, let me ask you a question. Last year, you guys were 30th in points, 25th in yards, 26th in pass, and 24th in run. Do you care if you're slightly better, but you can at least generate ter- like takeaways? Because you guys were yeah. 30th in the NFL. Say you guys don't change your rank, but you jump to 10th in takeaways. I'd rather oh, yeah. you guys try that. I Most go all definitely. Out. Look, there's two things. There's two things that you need to look at with defenses that make a team good on defense. Sacks and turnovers. Those are the biggest like stat that you want to look at. Yards, it is what it is. You're going to give up yards in the NFL. Yards are the most overrated stat in the league. Offense and defense. Because yards are just generated garbage time. There's there's so many variables in there. But if you get if you can generate pressure and you can get turnovers. You're going to be just fine on defense. You've seen the, in past times where the Chiefs were one of the worst defenses as far as yards-wise when they were really good. But you know what they did? They generated turnovers. And if you really want to look at I know a lot of Raider fans out there remember that 2016 year when we were actually good. Our defense wasn't that amazing. You know why we were a good team? Because, one, we put up points, yes, obviously. But number two, we were tied for number one in turnover uh, differential with the Chiefs. That's why our defense was at least solid. Like, we got turnovers. We gave up a lot of points in, in yards, but we was getting the ball back for our offense, and that's all you asked for. And if, if you say that scenario with turnovers, hell yeah, I'll be so happy. If we can generate turnovers and we can be in the top three or top five even, I think I can see this team being as a playoff contender just because of the offense. Let me ask you one more question. And this one we talked about a lot. The new look O-line for about, I would say, six years now, the Raiders O-line has not been a question mark. You can go back to when you guys signed or traded for Donald Penn, got Gabe Jackson, Rodney Hudson. Yeah, It was a really good Kaleche Osemele. But now you're left with Colton Miller, who I think – one of the best tack, not one of the best, but he's in the upper tier of tackles. He just no one yeah. talks about him. Right. Incognito, who's 39. Mm-hmm. Andre James, Denzel Good, and rookie Alex Leatherwood. It gets rough Alex on that right side. Uh Alex, I'm and I feel like Carr, if you're gonna get the most out of him, he kind of needs an old line. He's not one of yeah. the quarterbacks. Most definitely. Um, I'm not as low as other people. I completely understand where. Um, others is, are are getting to, but I I have complete confidence in Denzel Good and Andre James. 
as those two guys. I know no one knows who the fuck Andre James is, but he's a guy that's been working in the background of Rodney Hudson for a long time, and he's always been a solid player for the Raiders. Even when we had injuries and we told this guy to come in at times and work the work the at guard or center, he's done his job. So I have confidence in those two guys. The the question mark is with the rookie. And it's just it's really tough with with him. I, I really don't know. I seen the tape. It's not amazing. I think it's just average. And I think if he, he's Tristan Wirfs. That's great. That's yeah. like gonna change the line. Yeah. And if he's kind of like Andrew Thomas at the start of the year, it could be really bad. Yeah. But we really just gotta wait and see with Leatherwood. He, like he's got all the tools. It's yeah. just about putting him together. And I like you. We didn't even have him in our top five. He was an honorable mention, I believe, but yeah, it's kind of just like the Bama thing, dude. Yeah, it's the pedigree, but uh, the offensive line, it, it it can be good. I think it's good enough to to do. I I'm not as low on it as other people, and with with Carr and those receivers, I don't think we're we're not gonna we're not gonna run the ball as much as people think. Even though John Gruden loves running it. I think we're going to be really heavy passing this year, but that's just my opinion. How many playoff teams are in this conference? I think they're, I mean, two in this division, two off bat it has to be two. It's, it's, it's either, number one. Chiefs are locks. They're going to be a lock to be in the playoffs unless some crazy injury happens. And then uh, you can argue all three teams can make the playoffs. Who Maybe are you picking that, out of those three teams? Chargers. You, know, you got to pick the Chargers. Even I though think the Chargers might steal the division from the Chiefs. I know that's really? a huge if. Yeah. I that's how bullish I am on the Chargers. I feel but you. I, think, I I agree with you it's a lock those two are the best. That's teams. a tough road though, man. That's a very tough road. Man, I, I don't I, know if something it's like a obviously game schedule. It, every, every every game seems hard. Like every schedule seems hard as shit. Yeah. But obviously once you get in the year and there's a team that's 5 and 10 that we thought would be 12 and 5. Yeah. It's like, all right. Something obviously has to happen to the Chiefs for that to happen it could just be the fatigue like we talked about it could just be like hey it's four super bowl runs guys get hurt you have that sanity you got that 49er year right right i get you so let's move on to the next division where we at 23 minutes so let's go to the afc east all right i like that go different coast so we'll start off with with the buffalo bills man josh allen uh, Stephon Diggs and your Buffalo Bills are Buffalo. absolute absolute contenders, and I think obviously I had the Chiefs as a Super Bowl contender. This is my second one, and the Buffalo Bills were a team where I think they can actually get there to the Super Bowl. Only have a couple. I'll be revealing them as we do this preview. But the second team is the Bills because they are good, man. And I really like what they've been secretly building on that defensive line. I would, I really like the Bills, too. They're one of my contenders. I don't know if I said it. I think the Chiefs and the Chargers are contenders to win a Super Bowl or at least get there. Once you get to the game, anything can happen like we saw last year. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I think the addition of Gregory Rousseau, who I had in mind, I was more high on him than you were. Yeah. I think he's going to be a huge boon to this defense. It's like you see a lot of the names, right? Jerry Hughes, Ed Oliver, who we'll talk about him in a minute. But just the back end, Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, Tredavious White, Levi Johnson, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer. Those guys are rock solid. They're going to get the job done. It don't matter what's in front of them. Yeah. But for this defense to kind of get back to what it was, they need some people to generate pass rush. And – I mean, this is a make it or break a year for Ed Oliver, right? It's either he shit or get off the pot. Yeah. Look, Where's that guy who's Aaron Donald? He was supposed to be Donald. Right, right. Well, I mean, that's kind of unfair to say know, that. But, but I'm saying he ain't even. Highly been, touted. Yeah, he ain't been 30% of what he was built up to be yet. Look, and that's been a big problem with the Bills is that they just depend on Jerry Hughes. Like, if Jerry Hughes doesn't get pressure, they're kind of fucked. But and Jerry Hughes kind of lost his step. Oh yeah, most definitely. But I I like what Vernon Butler's bringing, like you said, Gregory Rousseau and Ed Oliver. I think you're you're 100 right, Max. He needs to make that leap. But you, you would think that Tremaine Edmonds can make a leap. 
Uh, Tredavious White's probably going to stay nice and steady. We, If you guys watched our top 10, um, he was one of those corners, and you know he's going to be good. Micah High, Jordan Poyer, probably the best safety tandem in the league, arguably. Yes, sir. Uh, and then on offense, uh, one one guy that I look to to make a big leap for them is a guy in Gabriel Davis. I'm really high on him. Oh, you stole yeah. mine. Yeah, I, I I like Gabriel Davis. I like the the little signs and little moments that we've seen last season from him. I think Cole Beasley's going to take a step down. I don't think he's going to be an all pro, even oh, though he should have. Yeah, even though he shouldn't have been, but. Kobe Beasley's an old fucking guy, man. I don't I don't think he's going to have a big year like he did last year. Honestly, he could have just as big if Gabe Davis takes the leap and then Cole Beasley's just eating off those two. I think the big question mark for the offense is the run game. No. It wasn't Pittsburgh Steeler bad last year, but man, it it was so <laughs> ordinary and I don't think they have any chance of improving. Like look at their backs. Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. Those guys are the least dynamic backs in football. <laughs> and I like both of them. I think yeah. they're both really coming solid, out. But... Coming out. No, I like them now. I like them now. Really? I'm just okay. they're, they're not dynamic. It's like, hey, let's get three yards. Let's get four yards. It's like Jordan Howard. Let's get yeah. four yards. But we're never yeah. going to get a 60-yard run. It's it's tough to say, man. They, they ran a lot of uh, empty set. They had Josh Allen have a lot of five wide receiver. But uh, I, I have confidence in the run game this year. I, I've been hearing a lot of stuff out of their camp saying like they want to run the ball more, and David Singletary is uh, looking a little bit better, and it looks like that he got a little bit more explosive this year. So hopefully he comes out of that tandem kind of like the better guy. I personally like him more than Zach Moss, but I, I really don't think that's going to matter. I, I think the NFL has just – so revolutionized now that if you're not to a point of the Pittsburgh Steelers where you cannot run the ball at all, like zero, not a, <laughs> that that's a problem. I think that's, that's probably like the worst. And I mean, you look at Pittsburgh, they, they started off really good. People are going to argue Fair their enough. schedule. Yeah. They, people are going to argue their schedule was soft, but the fact of the matter is, is that they were so bad in, in, in the run game. They were still a good team. That's just how, crazy the nfl is nowadays and i think the same for the bills I, they're, they're still going to be really good even if their run game is bad there were a couple of plays away from from being in that afc championship in my opinion i think they just need to generate some more pressure and run the oh, ball a little bit like better contending with the chiefs yeah yeah oh, okay yeah I, I don't think i i think I think the Chiefs were ha- like on one of those days, and they were really good. And I, I, I don't think the the talent discrepancy was that bad in that game, as people like as the score showed. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah, I get you. Um, I think the Bills they were in a fluke. I think they're the top dog in this division. Yeah, we can talk about maybe the second best team or maybe a third best, but I think this is a team that's the most controversial. I think yeah. it's the Patriots. And big news, big news. Well, Bam Bam Cam, yeah. don't let the door hit you on the way out, my guy. <laughs> like, uh, uh, that's great. I mean, it's kind of shocking, but it's kind of not. And look, these are the two stats that stick out to me. Last year, 180 pass gar- passing yards a game, 30th in the NFL. 24 sacks last year on defense, 26th in the NFL. What did they do this offseason one? They drafted a quarterback. They got pass catchers. They got edge rushers. Right. They they identified a weakness. Their offense is still one of the best in football, schematic wise. Mm. And it's Mac Jones show. So if like if you want to talk about Mac Jones or the defense, I'll let you pick. I I think Mac I, Jones is gonna have a good year. I don't know what to say. I don't I don't think he's gonna I don't think he's gonna have a good year. I think the offense is gonna be below par. The, the really? they're gonna yeah, I think they're gonna run the ball uh but I think they're going to win games off defense and special teams. I think Bill Belichick is going to kick it old school and really take so much value in special teams and defense because their defense is, I think it's, I think it's pretty good. They're going to get a guy in Dante Hightower back. Uh, JC Jackson, a lot of COVID guys back. Yeah. And and that was kind of not talked about last year. Right. And they got and, Devon Godshaw. They got uh, Barmore yeah. from Bama. Judon, 
yeah, Judon. Uh, Gilly Locks coming back. No, so, but he's hurt. He's hurt. No, I'm I think he's coming back though, and like uh, he'll be back though during the year. Yeah, I think he's on yeah. the PUP list. Right, right. They got. They're just well coached, bro. There's no yeah. other way to say it. Offense, they're well coached. They can they can beat you one week throwing the ball 30 times. They can run the ball. They yeah. weren't that bad last year. I know they went eight and eight. They had a lot of COVID shit. Cam was really bad. Look, if Mac Jones is like 20% better than Cam, they're probably in the playoffs. Right. But you look at their schedule, I think it's very favorable for them. They they play week one, the Dolphins, the Jets. Then they got the Saints, the Bucks, the Texans. That's a win. Cowboys winnable. Jets winnable. Chargers winnable. Panthers winnable. Browns. That's a toss up. I think Falcons. They get Terry, I think they get off to a kind of a like like a soft start because I don't yeah. think New Orleans is as tough as people think they are right now. It's not the New Orleans Saints of Drew Brees and everything else. And the Jets, until they prove otherwise, they're little brother at the division. They're going to get whooped on their two free wins a year. Would you be shocked? I can already uh, imagine it in my head that week four I'm watching on my couch. Tampa Bay Buccaneers undefeated 4-0 against the undefeated 4-0, or 3-0, excuse me. 3-0 Bucks against the 3-0 Patriots. Brady? I'd be surprised because I think the Dolphins <laughs> are better than them right now. Yeah, the Dolphins. But I mean, week one, anything can I, happen. Anything can happen. Yeah, week one's a fl- Like last year, Miami got spanked week right. one. Right. So a lot of crazy shit just happens week one. Yeah. So I can see them going three and zero. It's not crazy. It's the Patriots, bro. I know. I know they had a bad year last year, but let's not forget what they've done in this sport. It's it's Spursian. It's even yeah. more impressive because the NFL's never seen a rain like yeah. this. They're you just. I think. I, I think they they're reloaded. just. Gonna, yeah, they're gonna kick at. They're gonna kick ass in the trenches and. And have some Dude, fun on special teams, man. Their O line, Isaiah Wynn is good when he's healthy. Uh, Mike, oh, I don't know how to say his name, Awenu, he's a mm-hmm. monster. I like him a lot. David Andrews, Shaq Mason's good. Right tackle stud, Trent Brown. You know what he does when he's uh, on the Patriots. He gotta, you got to get back to what made you successful. I don't know about guy. stud. I don't know about They got that. him on that diet. He All right. right. Well, gun to your head, how many, how many games they win? Off top of your head. Ten. I like that number. At least so they'll 10. be ten and seven this year because they had seven. I don't know. Games. Is ten and is t- ten and seven sounds a lot worse than ten and six. Right? It does. I agree <laughs> with you. I think they're gonna definitely win more than six games. If you're a oh. betting guy, yeah. If you're a betting you're man, um, I, if it's six, I'd smash that over. Yeah. If it's over, I I would I would probably say that they're over unders to seven and a half right now and, uh, you know we know a certain patriot insider and i'm sure we'll have him on during week four <laughs> shout yeah, out to exactly. that guy is shout out to isaiah bro but uh yeah the i think the patriots are gonna be solid this year i don't think they're gonna they're a super bowl contender though i just think they're gonna they're gonna be one of those teams you don't want to fucking play man, man if they get in the playoffs you can't count them out though uh, rookie quarterback, though, it's tough, man. But it's Bill Belichick, dog. If there's been one guy who you're like, oh, we f- can't count out, yeah, Billy Ball. But like game, this bro. year, this year, he's gonna, he's gonna have like a big middle finger to be like, yeah, I'm still fucking good, assholes, you know. You forgot about me while y'all was sleeping. I was sleeping. <laughs> but uh, let's talk about the Jets and the Dolphins a little bit. Uh, Dolphins have been reports of Deshaun Watson, but for now, who was the guy? Uh, Apparently. they're kind of. Go ahead. Like, apparently, Brian Flores told the whole team two was the guy. <laughs> Dog, if they could get Deshaun for two and two first, bye. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah. That's like when like, like every coach says that bullshit and they make a trade. I forgot. That I, happened a couple years ago to somebody. For me, I think it's just going to be one of those situations where Deshaun Watson, I know he has all the allegations going on, but I think that's just going to be a big old process and it's not going to matter during the season. And he's going to. I think Deshaun Watson's going to play week one for some team. I don't know if it's the Texans. This year. This year. I have full I'd be comments. shocked. I would be I wouldn't shocked. be that shocked. I wouldn't be that shocked. It's a process, bro. That shit just takes time. I think if, if the NFL was going to put him on some list or suspend, it would have happened, but they can't. All that shit's it's a whole process. It, nothing's in stone. We don't know if it's true or not. And I think as the season goes along, that shit, everyone's just going to forget about it. And by the time offseason comes, that's where we'll find out 
all that shit in the courts and allegations and all all that bull. But I I think he's going to play week one. I don't know if it's going to be for the Dolphins. If it is for the Dolphins, they're a Super Bowl contender, in my opinion. Can I can I quick hit you with a couple questions about the Dolphins? Yeah. Are you sold on Tua? No, not at all. Me neither. Uh, this is you literally talked about this a couple minutes ago. Their defense last year was sixth in points, twentieth against the twenty third against the pass, sixteenth against the run, but they were first in takeaways. Yeah, I think this defense is stacked. Uh, they got Jalen Phillips, Raquan Davis, Wilkins, Ogba, Byron Jones, Xavier Howard, and they came to an agreement with him, so he'll be there. Yeah, I like their defense, and I like Brian Flores, man. I feel like they could really vie for a playoff spot this year. Like if they went ten and seven, eleven and six, I wouldn't be surprised at the slightest. Yeah, they barely missed the playoffs last year, but it was a I, bad way to go out last year. Yeah, they got smashed. The one thing that scares me is the quarterback. That's it. I I I heard a a lot of. Um, news that they're going to run a lot of stuff out of Jalen Waddle and that he was a big reason. Uh, he's a big reason why the, the offense is going to go like more, more gadget wise, more like he's going to be their Tyree kill. So to say, you, how good do you think Waddle's going to be his first year? And I feel like once it might be a fast start, mm-hmm. but then they adjust to it and it's like, Oh shit. Well, that the one be- thing that scares me is that he's not the most durable guy. I mean, you've seen him in preseason. Do they have they any look- durable receivers? I don't think. Yeah. You can't count Will on Fuller, Devontae Parker. Parker. Parker? Yeah. Who's their uh, best pass catcher? Gasicki? Yeah, probably Gusecki. I say Gasicki easily. Yeah. Uh Austin Jackson oh. is not really developing well for them. Their whole line's scary to me. Yeah, their O line is very scary. I know they and, block okay. Yeah. But if there's no name, I'm like, oh, I want that guy on my team. And people people are gonna argue like, oh, Austin Jackson, that's not his blind side because two is left handed. And it don't matter. Both it tackles are important. Yeah, it don't matter. Right. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, their offensive line scares me. Uh, but their defense, they're they're, defen- they're, they're kind of like the Patriots. They're a mirror image of them. Of they play defense and they have great special teams. They love to the, the get the hand get their hands on the balls and get turnovers, man. But other than that, it's all on Jalen Waddle. And because I, I just don't believe in Tua to be the guy to lead this team to what 13 wins. Like I don't see it. I, the gadget plays sound great, bro. Yeah. But at some point you're going to have to beat teams. We kind of saw it with drew Brees. If you can't challenge a team vertically, it puts a real bind on the offense. Right. They got guys who can challenge you vertically, but I don't know if they got the arm into it to expose them. Exactly. And that's the truth. And I, I like Flores, like you said, man. I, I like the defense, but quarterback's still the most important position. And with the big question mark there, and their offense in general, it's like the running game might not be good either. Especially if you can't run the ball to it, yeah. I'm kind of scared. Exactly. Well, let's move on to the Jets. I think the Jets are going to be a feisty group. Robert Sala, first-year head coach. Zach Wilson, rookie quarterback. Uh, just I, I think when it comes down to just history – I don't think there's a lot of times where it's a rookie head coach and a rookie quarterback. It doesn't end up all that well. I mean, this is not Andrew like Andrew Luck. Like that's once in a while, you know. That's, yeah, that's, but that's a specific situation. Exactly. Like, literally, they were just missing a quarterback. They were a playoff team the year yeah. before, lost a yeah. quarterback. So I, I don't think this team is going to do you know anything amazing. But I think they're going to be a pain in the ass to play uh, week to week. I think they have a kick-ass defense. They got some guys that just whoop ass, like I'm Sheldon. Kinda, I'm kind of scared about their defense, bro. And I've been cutting you off a lot. I apologize. Just Carl Lawson being hurt sucks. Yeah, really sucks. but but they got Shaq. Uh, they traded for Shaq Lawson. Well, I guess they I, just I like that. Wanted trade. to keep the uniform or some shit. <laughs> all those all those Carl Lawson jet jerseys. Now they're Shaq Lawson jet jerseys. All right, Quinnen. This is a guy we got to watch. Ed Oliver, yeah. he was better than Ed. He kind of came on. But like I said, and I'll say it again, I've never seen tape that good coming out of college. He was mm-hmm. better than Donald tape-wise. Yeah. yeah. If he can be an Aaron Donald-like guy, that defense could be really fucking good. It was already good. Yeah. 
And Zach Wilson, jury's out. He's been the most impressive rookie quarterback, but it's the preseason. Right. Detroit Lions went 4-0, and and then they went 0-16. Right. Let's not put too much cre- credence in it. Yeah, I'm not looking for much for the offense. I like Elijah I, Moore. I think they'll be more competitive, bro. Yeah. They're, they're, no, they're not going to be a slap dick team. They're going to be competitive. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, no. they're not going to be a slap dick team. They're not going to be a teabag team. Yeah, they're not gonna be a tea bag team. I think that we we gotta we, we gotta make that a segment. Tea bag team of the of the week, official. Oh, All right, fuck yeah. You you heard it here. Tea bag team of the week. They're not gonna be a tea bag team though. They're gonna be a whoop ass team, and they're gonna lose some close games. Their offense is not gonna be able to generate points some weeks. But I, I like their defense. I, I think it's just a bunch of solid guys that that just work hard and play hard. Like they're Sheldon Rankins, Quentin Williams. I like CJ Mosley coming back. Uh, Gerard Davis, Bryce Hall, uh, your boy, Marcus May. Like these are just mm-hmm. guys who just, you know, they play hard week to week. Uh, they have, they have a lot of young guys on the offense though. Elijah Moore, Elijah Vera Tucker, Zach Wilson. Those are three rookies that they're starting. So mm-hmm. I think any, anyone that says they're going to be really good, I think it's a low, low chance. I don't see it at all. Not to mean that they're going to be bad, uh, like terrible, but I think it's just, it's wishful thinking. It's rookie quarterback, rookie head coach, rookies all over the place. A lot it's, of it's growing pains yeah. in store. Uh, yeah. Over under one. Or two, one and a half Hail Marys given up to lose games. <laughs> under. under, They don't have fucking Greg Williams running shit no more. Yeah. Oh, I wish the Eagles <laughs> signed him as a new coordinator. It would have been great. Right. So we're I'm at just... 40. So we're at 42 minutes, Max. We got two divisions done. We got two more to go. Uh, we appreciate you guys joining us, man, for this premiere of our NFL preview AFC edition. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment down below. All right, we got the live chat going on on Saturday. It's a great day, bro. Great day to talk football. But let's go into the AFC North now. Let's talk about Baltimore because this is my third team that I think is a Super Bowl contender. So now I got the Chiefs, I got the Ravens, and I got the Bills. And look, Lamar, your boy. Lamar. What you thinking on the Ravens, Max? I don't have them as a Super Bowl contender. Really? I think if they're a Super Bowl contender, they need to get hot at the right time. And it's got to be a little fluky in some sense, you know? I don't believe if everyone's healthy, they're a Super Bowl contender. I think, one, it's the toughest division in the AFC. No. Cleveland, Pittsburgh, them. I think Cincinnati with a healthy Burrow. Could be feisty. I just, <laughs> I'm worried, man. I'm worried about all the injuries to the passing game. Like, Bateman's down. Sammy Watkins, pencil him in for a hamstring strain. J.K. That's Dobbins. Yeah, Marquise Brown. J- yeah, J- J.K. Dobbins. A crappy O-line. We don't really know much about. I don't know. I just don't like it, man. I don't like the defense really. I, I like the addition of Jason away, but is he going to have some uh, Alden Smith rookie or impact? I don't think so. Their defense is kind of old. Marlon's good. Jimmy Smith, Sean Way, Marcus Peters, I like. They're going to win 10 games. They'll be frisky, but I don't think they're a real Super Bowl contender. I hope I'm wrong. I like Baltimore a lot. You know that. I'm going to I'm gonna strongly disagree with you. Um and this is crazy that I'm on the other side of this. I feel like I'm I'm the defender of Lamar Jackson right now. Well, that'll shift but... in like two fucking weeks. Don't worry. <laughs> no, I, I think they will start off slow just because of the injuries. Like Rashad Bateman's been hurt for a lot of training camp. And that's just a guy that you want to you wanna have be on par on if you're Lamar Jackson. And Lamar Jackson had that COVID thing going in the beginning of training camp. So they just haven't been out there. So – the good thing about it is that their schedule starts off really, really soft. Okay. They got the Raiders winnable. Uh, Chiefs, that's oh, a yeah. tough game. That's a tough game in week two. It is. But after that, Lions, Broncos, Colts, Chargers, Bengals, like those are no, like, oh my God, like scary teams. Like, yeah, we expect the Chargers to be good, but it's not like they're a powerhouse like the Chiefs 
or you got to play the Browns like coming out or the Packers. Like their their tell end of the schedule is tough. Yeah, it, that's what we from have week highlighted. twelve. Yeah, week twelve to week eighteen is tough. You got the Browns, Steelers, Browns again, Packers, Bengals, Rams, Steelers. That's, that's I think that's the worst six week fucking stretch, bro. Tough man. Those are four division games. It's tough. And it's not just four. It's not like you're playing a, a soft division team. Yeah, no slap you're dicks. Playing T-bag, T-bag, sorry. Teams in this shit, you know? <laughs> I, I, it's tough. Like yeah. I said, like you kind of said they might get off to a slow start. I think the start won't be the problem. It might be how they end. Yeah. And that's I what think, worries me. I think they're going to be good by then, though. I think that's going to really define them. If they're hitting their stride, I agree with you. But if it's yeah. kind of like last year where it's just struggle the whole year, I'm worried. Yeah. But I'm I, worried. I just I really like their team, man. I, I truly believe that they're going to they're going to win the Super Bowl like I think I'm going to wind up betting on them early in the year um to win it. I don't know what the odds are. I'm not that big of a betting man, but I would I would doubt like they're super high. But I like Lamar and even though JK Dobbins got hurt, I think Gus is Gus Edwards is just as good as JK Dobbins in my opinion. I think they're too different. I think they're really good to have together. JK's more of get outside and get the 80 yard touchdown. Mm. Gus bus. He a bus, bro. What can I say? I don't I don't, so. I don't I think so. I don't I I think I don't I don't think so. I I think he has a little bit more elusiveness that people give him credit for. I think he's going to be really good this year. Gus I, I like Gus. I just think his skill set, he wears down defenses with physicality, mm. which is really important to me. Mm. I know people are saying they lost their lead running back in um J.K. Dobbins, but isn't their lead running back Lamar Dave, uh, Lamar Jackson? I'm gonna say Lamar, Lamar Davis. Yeah. I'm gonna say Lamar Davis. I'm but just saying, I, not bad quarterback. Yeah, uh, and running back. Sorry. I, and I'm really confident in Rashad Bateman. I, they're gonna start off slow. It's gonna take some time, but I think they're gonna hit that midseason tried. And their defense is gonna be really. It's gonna be great. Um, me, I like I like Wink, my boy Wink. I like he, Winky. He should have got a head. He should have got a head coach job. Um, in my opinion, he's been amazing for them on the defensive end. Uh, I really like the Ravens, man. I think they're going to win the division, and I'm going to call it right here. I, they're they're a team that I predict winning the Super Bowl, at least tell, getting there. Tell me their win loss record, and tell me how big of an impact Marquise Brown has, or if is is it important that he has a big impact? Uh, it's not as important. And I think they're going to win about 11 games. Oh, and they'll still get to the Super Bowl? Yeah. Yeah. Dang, that's a tough road. I like the confidence. I'm feeling yeah. maybe I should switch it up. I, don't, I really I really like them, man. I, I really like the Ravens this year. I think they're going to make that leap. I might be wrong, but that's what it is. It's predictions. It's the Max and Juan cast. I got balls, homie. I'm going to go with the Ravens. They're one of my Super Bowl contenders and probably my Super Bowl pick to make it for the AFC at least. Yeah, bro. I, I like it, man. I like it's gonna be a tough division, bro. That's all I'm yeah. gonna say. Man, right. Let's get into the maybe the second best team, Cleveland Browns or Pittsburgh. Either I'll let you pick. Uh no, it has to be Cleveland. We have to talk Cleveland. Uh they're probably a uh contender to win the Super Bowl, also, but I I don't think they're there yet. Uh I'm not completely sold. I'm not completely sold on on the offense. To be what honest. about the offense? What about the? Is it about a guy who, who's probably acting in so many commercials right now? He has no time <laughs> to throw football. Look, yeah. I'm going to ask you this because I'm I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. So be ready, okay? Okay. Do they have a Baker Mayfield problem, or do they have an Odell Beckham problem? Uh, I think it's or a Baker have- Mayfield. No, I, I I don't. I think it's neither. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, I don't want to sound like I'm backtracking and kind of. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take that back. I'm sorry. I'm going to take that back. Uh, I don't think it's their offense. Their offense is not going to be as big of, of a problem as I think. Because they think got the so many weapons. The trust in Baker. Yeah. I You kind of seen it last year, though, with the Chiefs. Didn't he show you a little bit something that we didn't yeah, see? In the beginning part of the year, there was no doubt in my mind. He was yeah. getting managed. And yeah. you can't win a Super Bowl unless you have an elite defense, which they don't have. And you're managing your quarterback and saying, "Hey, don't lose us the game." 
Right. They have a two-headed monster in the backfield. They have the best O-line of football, yeah. in my opinion. They yeah, have... that – yeah. Go That's ahead. what makes me backtrack. That's what makes me backtrack from it because I see all the weapons. I see Odell, see Landry, the, um, like you said, one of the best offensive lines last year. It's going to be really tough for him to – to be unsuccessful and look that bad. And I, I I don't think Mayfield's as bad as I thought the first like 10 weeks of the year last year. He really showed me something in Kansas City, something I never seen from him. I kind of seen a little bit of the Oklahoma Baker, but um they're gonna be good. They're gonna be they're gonna still be good. It's probably the defense that's gonna struggle because you look at yeah. their corners, you look at their corners, like who is it gonna be besides Denzel Ward after that? I like Troy Hill personally, but they got greedy, they got Troy, they got a lot of corners in that second spot. We don't know who the hell is gonna be that guy for them. And Jadavion Clowney, I know we're big fans of him, but I mean the truth of the matter is is He's that a name, he, bro. He ain't yeah, a product. He's a name. Exactly. Malik Jackson, like he hasn't been good in about three years. Hey, Andrew- hey, <laughs> hey, come on. And then their linebackers are just solid. Uh, we like one. I I think we both like one. We yeah, like JL, JL, yeah, JOK has been looking really good in the preseason. They got John Johnson, Grant mm-hmm. Delpit's coming back. Yeah, I like the talent. I just don't know how it fits together. Exactly. You know exactly. Sometimes the linebacking I mean, course is pretty weak in my opinion other than jok yeah. but he's not really a linebacker he's a strong De- safety playing browns linebacker. right now browns right now definition of paper champs on paper it's it's amazing their roster is stacked if it's just how a, how do you fit it if there was like a dream team eagles is this the team you'd pick yeah obviously granted they're not talking that shit yeah but i i i don't know what this I'm kind of worried about Baker, and not in the sense that I think he sucks, but mm. I think they need him to be better than one. If he's like the last eight weeks of Baker plus a little bit, yeah. they're scary. Like if you right. don't have to worry about Baker, this team's a Super Bowl contender. I didn't right. pick them. They're like kind of what I said. Like I kind of got to see a little more before I believe it. Exactly. Well, let's move on to Pittsburgh. Uh, a lot of Pittsburgh Steeler fans in general. We live in LA. It's probably them and the Packers toss up. After the the Raiders, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, but it's true though. Low key fake, right? You get one uh, terrible tell, you ain't no fan. Oh yeah, I mean, but for the most part, Pittsburgh fans are legit. Oh I'm no, not I'm lie. just saying in LA, just in yeah, LA, there's some fake yeah, fans. You'll see them, but um, Big Bang coming back for another year, baby. The boy is old as shit. Um, Najee Harris, Ricky, Juju Smith, T.J. Watt coming back. You expect him to have another great year. Um, why isn't this team a Super Bowl contender? I'll tell you why. It's one reason. Um, Ben Roethlisberger, in my opinion. Um, he's ben old. Rottenberger? Roethlisberger. Rotten. He's a little, a little rotten, rotten though. So maybe <laughs> Rottenberger. Yeah, uh, he probably he'll probably have a tea bag kind of year. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> I'm just not a big fan, dude. I don't see it. I I love their roster. I love Chase. Uh, Deont- uh, Deontay Johnson, I I like it, but I don't like Big Ben. And I know, like, he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. He 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 did what he did in those Super Bowls, and you know Pittsburgh was great back then. But this is 2021, and I don't I don't really see it. I think the the best case scenario is to have like a like a year like Philip Rivers. Like, can he play Philip Rivers type level next year or this year? Should I say? If he plays Philip Philip Rivers level, I'm not I'm not happy. Yeah. I'm actually kind of worried. Yeah, exactly, because he's going to turn over the ball a lot. <laughs> but they have so much talent, like I was just saying. So is it crazy that they're going to still make it to the to the playoffs? No, I don't think it's crazy at all. They have so much talent. It's just the quarterback that worries me. What is Big Bang going to do when the pressure's in his face? Is he going to throw the is he well, going to throw an interception to lose it? Like, I'm probably. Thinking, I'm thinking right now, maybe we shouldn't just say it's a Big Ben issue. How about it's a Big Ben plus the O-line issue? Kevin Doxon, no. don't really love him. Trey Turner, kind of passes prime. Zach Banner, don't really love him. Kendrick Green, Chuma. No. It's, it's okay. Could it mold to be something good down the year? Yeah, I think it's going to be rough in the beginning. Hmm. Uh, 
this is a team last year. They couldn't, they really didn't block that well either way. I know they had some passing yards. They didn't give up a lot of sacks. They threw the ball so freaking quick. There was no chance of getting a sack. <laughs> that doesn't mean you blocked well. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, Mike Tomlin's going to do an amazing job. I think he's, he's slowly coming underrated in a weird way. It's kind of crazy. I think Mike Tomlin's really fucking good, but uh, it's a big band for me. That's, that's what really scares me. Uh, I like the team though. Uh, their defense is really good. Devin Bush, Melvin Ingram, Cameron Hayward, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh, you look at their schedule. Um, it's not that terrible. Uh, very, very doable. The ends gets a little tough. Ravens. So week 13 to week 18, they got Ravens at Minnesota. Then they got the Titans at chiefs, then the Browns. And they finish off at Baltimore. Yeah. Those last four games. That's tough. Yeah. The only easy like pick them. And I mean, we don't know what the Vikings are going to be. I know we're judging it off last season, but. Once we get into the NFC, I don't think they're going to be shit. They're probably going to be a teabag team, to be honest. <laughs> How does it feel to say Week 18? By the way, I know it's so fucking weird, so weird. Dude, but um, how many? How going to be a big loss? Uh, I don't think so. They showed it last year that it wasn't that big of a loss. I think as as long as they got TJ there, I think if he plays at that level, they'll be fine. I feel like with TJ though. Two, it played out of his mind. Cameron Hayward's a dog. Yeah. It's just kind of, they're getting a little long in the tooth, a couple of the guys. Yeah. And do it. You're, yeah. Devin Bush, he's going to be good once he comes back. I know they traded for Sh- Joe Shorbert. Bush is good. He's up and coming. And honestly, they could, if they could find one fucking corner, this team would be scaring me a whole lot more. Like, they're not bad, but they yeah. play a lot of zone. They're not going to man up. They're not that type of team. Yeah. Um, before we move on to the Bengals, how many games you got them winning? I'm going to go with nine. Nine. Wow. I say they 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 get the double digits. They get 10. I just have confidence in Mike Tomlin. But as far as them going far, I don't see it with Big Ben. And I, I won't be surprised if it gets ugly. But that's probably what you're saying, though. Like, would you be surprised if they went five or six? Yeah, I'd be a little surprised. I feel like that's all the talent. Low. Yeah, a lot of little. Yeah, it would have to be a lot of injuries for me. To yeah, big that. big band will have to play fucking dog shit if they. That'd if be they some Peyton Manning anymore. last year type shit, and I I don't think Big Ben's there, but mm. he's he's closer there than we've ever seen. I know that's kind of a cop out, but I mean, yeah, and all the Steelers. Like, we said last year at eleven and zero, we're like this team isn't good. Like they're not oh, yeah. that good. Yeah, shout out, shout out to me. I picked football team to beat them. I was like, I knew this motherfucker. When we first started, that was like one I of our. I knew it. I that was like one. Knew it. That was one of our like first like uh, podcast. That was like our episode like seven or something. Yeah, it was early. Shout out to us back then. Shout I was sick. Young, young Max and Young Juan. I know the fucking dark ages of the MJC show. That was the Juan and Max cast. <laughs> <laughs> um. So let's move on to the Bengals. Is this the a bagels? T- bagels? The <laughs> <laughs> the, the Cincinnati okay. Bagels. Uh, is this a tea bag team? Yeah. No. What's what define a tea bag team? Texans. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll probably but, leave them for last because they're tea bags. Yeah, oh yeah. They're the no. Group. I think no. Nah, the Bengals are not a tea bag team. No. I don't think so. It, they could be if they really underperform. I think they should be frisky. Uh, honestly, I think it's going to be a slow start. Burrow has barely played. It was bad injury, very bad. If, yeah. if you sit him six weeks, I'm not mad at you. Is he's got to be a hundred percent? Look, they went four, eleven, and one last year. Shout out to the Eagles for that one tie. Uh, <laughs> this O line scares the shit out of me. Jonah Williams, <laughs> Xavier so Tuafilo, Trey Hopkins, Jackson Carmen. I actually like Jackson Carmen. Riley Reeves, solid dude. If Jonah can be anything, it would help. He hasn't played. Yeah, it's I, scary. I don't know. It's like, bro, you're gonna. I like Jamar Chase. I know he's had his struggles. Let's not get too much into it. He hasn't played football in a year. But Panay Sewell, even he's had his struggles. I still feel so much better with like protecting my franchise guy. 
I think if they can protect Burrow, this offense can, fuck. Even if they can't protect Burrow, he makes so many plays. Yeah, I they don't gonna, think they're gonna have a good offense. Like, I don't think people realize how good he was in the short time he played. Like, this fool was dodging like five people to play and throwing dots. Right. And you know they got the trio. You brought up Chase, but they got they still got T Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Uh, a lot of people are expecting a big leap from from T Higgins. You know the re the reoccurring theme that that I see with a lot of teams that I try to look at is you look at the roster and you try to see what guys can make that jump. Like how many guys do you have in your roster to make a leap? You know, uh, they don't have many, in my opinion. Higgins? I think that that's Burrow. about it. It's Higgins, it's Higgins, Burrow, and Chase. But I don't really think those are type of guys who take leaps. They're just kind of developing. You know? Yeah, like exactly. They, they, sometimes when you're a second year player, it's like, yeah, no shit, you take a leap. You're supposed right. to take a leap. But yeah. like, if they got like. Sometimes, though, there's guys like uh, Xavier Rose who kind of – I know he yeah. was a high pick, but he took a leap from a good corner to, like, the best corner in the NFL. Right. You know? Maybe Jesse Bates can take a leap, even though yeah. he's really – or Chidobe Awuze can take well, a leap. Well, I mean, regardless, I, I think even if they're a young player, I still look at the leap uh, as, you know, just bona fide leap. Like, you expect these guys to be good, and they don't have a lot of those on their roster. They just don't. I, I don't see them. Like um, DJ Reader was kind of a disappointment last year that he was a big free agent pickup. Didn't I play that played much, right? Yeah, I don't. I think he was hurt for most of the year. But I'll look it up. Go ahead, though. We'll see what he does. Larry Okunjobi from Cleveland. Trey like Wilson, him. Pratt. I like, I like Okunjobi, but he's just solid to me. Yeah, Trey Waynes. He is who he is. He's a fast corner that doesn't know any technique and still can't learn. Uh, Chidobe, Shout out to Combine Trey Waynes, <laughs> uh, Jesse Bates, really good. I, he's one of the top top safeties in the league. Uh, maybe Von Bell, but I don't even think him. You know what Solid. I mean? Like, there's just not there's not a lot of Solid. talent on the defense that that is young that can get really like better. You know, like even the Jets have guys like that that can just flat out just have some room for improvement. Like it's, it's a make weird a roster. It's a it weird is. roster. Oh, it is. Honestly, maybe the only go ahead. May, maybe a guy, Jonah Williams. Maybe he's that guy that was Just highly stay healthy, drafted. bro. I can't even expect him to make a yeah. leap. T- making a leap for that fool is staying healthy. Exactly. Look, if they're going to win games, they're going to outscore. So if the offense as, as a whole can make a leap, and we didn't really mention Joe Mixon, but he's a really good running back. Yeah. Very good running back. Any comp? Do you like Zach Taylor? I like that him coach. more than I like Cliff Kingsbury. But that not a whole lot. Fairly said. Um, top five of your head, five, five. Okay, five. No. Yeah, five. It is. A, it's weird this year. But again, man. This, you can. They can only win five. Ga- they could win three games. But if they're like frisky in all the games, that's a win to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the tough thing about them is that the division. They yeah. they got three playoff teams. They got six games against playoff teams. Right. All right, folks. So we're an hour in, hour and three minutes, man. I like we're, our pace, though. I think we're doing hey, I'm pace. loving it. I'm loving it, man. We got one division to go. Um, if you guys are in here, um, welcome. Make sure to subscribe, man. Subscribe to the channel. We do NBA videos. We do NFL. Uh, we do podcasts like this. Uh, welcome to the MJC, uh, MJC fam, bro. Uh, AFC edition today. Saturday afternoon, let's get into the AFC South now. Last division. Okay, so who's the top dog in here? We got the Colts, we got the Jags, we got the Texans, and we got the Tennessee Titans. No contenders for me in this division that can win the Super Bowl. Unfortunately. I have one. Who? I have one. I have the Colts. Really? Me. Big fucking little ass. eagle run? Well, maybe a little, maybe get the gang back together, get a little Frankie and a little Carson, and make a little magic. I man, like it. I, Look, well, let's start off with the Colts, man. We have no, to no, no. That. Let's start off with dog shit. Let's work our way up. <laughs> tea bags. We got the tea bag team of the fucking century. <laughs> What's worse, this year or the year they had David Carr? Uh, probably the year they had David Carr. They were pretty bad. <laughs> Look. I, let me let me tell you the hard part of their schedule, okay? You, I got week one, Jacksonville. Week two, Cleveland. Week three, Carolina. Oh, I'm going to go to weeks 18 unless you want to stop me. 
I got all weeks. <laughs> I don't see a winnable fucking game. Oh man, it's gonna be tough. I it's hard for me what, to look think at their that. schedule. Tell me the the team they got the best chance. They got the Jets. Man. I feel like there's such a talent discrepancy between them and everyone else. I mean, look, we're gonna spend it's it's whatever time it is now, we're gonna spend four minutes on. Who's their best player? Is that Sean Watson? <laughs> he doesn't count. I know, I know. Just um, like you talk about guys who can make leaps. Who the f- can make a leap on that team? Justin Reed's a guy that can make a leap. Like Laramie Tunsil, but like, bro, like a left tackle. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch this team with a 10 foot pole, man. Uh they're they're gonna definitely be a T bag team of the week consistently this season for us. Probably probably just let them own the award all all seven uh all 18 weeks, even on their bye week. Fuck it. Um their head coach is not that good. David Cully. I don't really like him. Who's gonna be worse? David Cully or I don't think Urban Myers. Cully's the problem. I think the organization is just rotted. If there's no. if there's stink, like if the fish stinks from the head, it's gonna stink everywhere, you know? Like they have so much wrong with this team. You know, you heard the stuff about the uh Costan- uh Nick uh Costanzio, whatever fuck his name is from the Patriots. He's like owner of the team now. He's right. a chaplain. Yeah, uh, it's a joke, bro. It's a joke. Tyrod mm. Taylor. That's that's a guy who's really gonna elevate the team. Brandon Cooks. <laughs> if I was them, I trade everybody, bro. Just trade uh, everyone who has a little bit of value. Yeah, it's tough, man. I love how he brought his boy Lovey Smith. Like, where the fuck Shout has Lovey, Lovey Smith, Smith been? Like, <sighs> he has a beard now. Five, five, my guy. I don't fucking know, man. It's it's tough. What's the record? Do they win a game? I think they win a game. I'm gonna give them a game. They Shout probably out to their first pick. Oh wait, they don't have that. Like what? they can they can beat the Jags. They can beat the Jags. Oh my God, dude! I got, I got you. Got Trevor Lawrence at least. Are they winning their bye week? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe like maybe that'll be the day Deshaun gets like thrown in jail for ten years. <laughs> oh they lose God. that too. I hope not. I don't know if he's guilty or not. I hope, I'm gonna oh, wait till the evidence because I'm just saying, just that's how bad this like shit's gonna go for them. Who's who's worse though? Who's more of a tea bag, David Cully or Urban Myers? Who's gonna do worse? David Cully. Shout uh, Bill O'Brien's the biggest tea bag. Cause let's 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 go from uh, T, yeah T bag number one to T bag number two Urban Myers. Um, all the reports that have been coming out of Jack's training camp is that it is not looking too good. Um, I've heard like the players are not really responding well to his style of coaching. Well, I mean, does um, that surprise you? Like he's a hard ass, and these are grown yeah. ass men. They're not college kids. And I mean, it's it's kind of different, you know. Everyone wants to compare him to the Pete Carroll. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Pete Carroll made the jump. You know, like, a guy like that. So, like, it's doable. People don't remember, like, before Pete Carroll was killing shit in USC, like, he's been there, done that. He was the Jets yeah, he, head coach. He was he was on the Patriots. Like, yeah. he's been an NFL coach before that. Urban Meyer I, hasn't done shit in the NFL. I hate when people just say, oh, college coaches don't succeed or college coaches can't succeed. It's a it's a guy by guy case. You one coach is not similar to another. You know, Pete Carroll's his own man. Bill, Bill Belichick's own man. Jim Harbaugh. He worked for a year and then he failed. Yeah. So it, it's not it nothing to do with the college. It's just about the guy and everything we've heard. It's just rubbed guys the wrong way. When he signed Tim Tebow, rubbed guys the wrong way. Yeah, that, I think that was a mistake in itself. Yeah, good. Like they cut him, good for them. But like, why even? Why even bring that seed of this? Like, <sighs> why? Why are you playing locker? your? Why are you playing your second round pick that many um, minutes? Or snaps? Yeah, uh, snaps. Why, sorry. <laughs> why are you talking shit about a receiver that was good for the team last year, DJ Chark? Yeah. Why aren't you naming Trevor Lawrence the starter? I mean, you guys just lost Travis Etienne. Yeah, First why Why are you having a quarterback competition with Gardner Minshew? Shout out to my eagle. Yeah, shout out. I mean, traded him, but it's like. I mean, maybe, just, that, was, maybe that was their plan just to kind of boost up value. It doesn't but really it just, make any it's sense. A, it's not worth it, though. That six-round exactly. not worth whatever that bullshit you did to get it. 
Exactly. Look, and I kind of like the offense, but I'm just so sour on Urban Meyer. And we could be wrong by week one. Who knows? Yeah. yeah I exactly. like Trevor, obviously. I like Chark a lot more than you do. I like LaVisca. Not I think that's solid. That's my guy. I I'm calling it right now. I know we're not a big fantasy podcast. LaVisca Chenault is gonna be the number one guy for the Jags. And I think he's gonna finish off stats wise. As a top 20 receiver, no fucking doubt in my mind. That's how much faith I have in Chanel. I think Chanel's going to be really good. I think he's going to be a lot better than DJ Chark and Marvin Jones. Everyone's been talking about those two guys being the guy. It's LaVishka for me. But moving on to the defense, uh, I like Josh Allen. Not a big fan of Caleb on Chase on. I, I don't um, like both those guys. I think they both kind of need to shit or get off the pot. Really? I th- I feel like that about Caleb on. I think Josh I, has shown a lot more. Josh has shown a lot more. He's got a lot more like leeway on the rope, but I still yeah. want to see more because he was good as a rookie, bad as a right. sophomore. I know the team was bad both years. Right. Uh, CJ Miles Henderson. Jack, weird. A trade request, right? They were talking yeah. about trading him. It's just weird. And right. he's really good. And Shaquem Griff, Shaquille Griffin's whatever. He's not that good of a corner. I like Tyson Andre Campbell. Cisco. Like them a lot. Cisco, if he's healthy, he'll be big. Rashawn Jenkins is good. Yeah. There's a lot of talent, but the only sport where if your coach is – that bad, it won't matter the talent. That's football, which is really nice about football. Like if David Blatt was coaching this team, or like excuse me, if David Blatt coached the Cavs, they still make the finals, right? Yeah. If Urban Meyer coaches all this talent, they won't make the playoffs. Yeah. Uh rookie head coach, rookie quarterback, not a good recipe, like I like I said. Um uh, with same thing. Trevor with the Jets. Lawrence, though, isn't your like typical rookie. I'm sorry, he's still a rookie in my book. Um I mean, it could be Andrew Luck effect, bro. Yeah, maybe. But I think Andrew Luck had a little way better team than this. I agree with that. No doubt. Yeah. And more like a system around them. And coaching. Like, he he had Bruce Arians. I think that was a big reason that he succeeded. Um, let's move on. Enough of the fucking teabag teams. Let's get into the contenders. Um, you want to start I off? I thought with you the, didn't have one. Are you saying the Titans are a contender? No, well, they're the Colts are a contender with you, and I I think the the Colts and the Titans are going to make the playoffs. I just don't think they're a Super Bowl contender. For oh, okay, me. I got you. I got you. My bad. I misunderstood. Yeah. Let's go to Titans first. Is that cool? Okay. Yeah. Offense, offense, more offense. <laughs> I, are you tired of the Tannehill just hatred? Outside? Yeah, disrespect towards. Why is Tannehill. he so bad? What, like I know he doesn't throw the ball a lot. It's but when it's he the stupid it, he narrative. Plays. It, I I think it's a lazy it's a lazy narrative on him because he was hurt in Miami, and a lot of people don't realize like when he was healthy for Miami, like he was good. But I, I think it's the whole Miami narrative. Like they keep on thinking he's a bad quarterback. He went there as a backup. Mariota was still the starter, but. Brian Tannehill's a damn good fucking quarterback. I think at worst, if you want to be generous, like if you consider Baker a top quarterback, like Ryan Tannehill is too. Ryan and I th- Baron Baker. You yeah, know. in my opinion. But a lot of people like to put Baker as like one of the top guys. You know, you know, it's not easy to play quarterback like Tannehill, where you basically run the ball first and second, and if it's third and long, you're like throw the fucking ball. Yeah. And I know they have good play action. You love AJ Brown. Yes. He's really good. No, I don't know how big a impact Julio is going to have. Is he better than Corey Davis? No doubt. I think Julio, the best way to utilize him right now, he's 34, 33. You kind of got to face him. Pace, exactly. You don't want the injuries to creep up. People are going to say he's been, he's been healthy. Look at the game log. Dude, every year he's fucking banged up, not practicing. Do he's they practicing. need him? Do they need him to win in the regular season? No, they need him to make a Super Bowl run. Okay. I agree. I agree. I think they need to pace him, do a little bit, little bit less of what New England did with Gronk and what Tampa Bay did with Gronk. I think he needs to be a little bit more utilized than that, but kind of like the same concept. How, like, you know, let's just throw him along. You know, there's going to be some games where we're going to be tempted to, to really play him heavy, heavy snaps, but. Pull the brakes. Let's you know. Let AJ Brown get that work. Let Derek Derek Henry run the ball. Just the um, first year, he yeah. might not be the only weapon on his team at receiver. Like I know he right. Calvin Ridley. I know we had Roddy White. Roddy White. I think AJ Brown's the best receiver he's ever played with. Yeah. 
And on their defensive line, uh, they add Bud Dupree. I think it's pretty solid, in my opinion. I love Danico Autry. Yeah, really love great. that. Yeah. Sim- if Sim- Simmons is a guy who can make a leap. Yeah, Simmons and that's Landry a leap guy. Can. Javon Brown, I think, can make a leap. Yeah. Caleb Farley could have a Marcus or Marshawn Lattimore type impact. Yeah. Per- like, this is this is a perfect example of just guys in key positions that can have jumps for the Titans. You look at a guy like Christian Fulton, who I really loved coming out. He's a guy that can make a leap. Caleb Farley, obviously. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons, another guy. Harold Landry. Um, Bud Dupree, AJ maybe, Brown. Maybe Bud, Bud Dupree is the real deal. Yeah, I mean Bud Dupree's. Been, you know, he's established. I really like to look at you know relatively young guys. I under, but, I get that, but I think yeah. he's a little rare case, just because he's always been a number two. But what right. is really number one? And we just yeah. never really gave him credit for it. We're like, you're only getting that shit because you're number two, and say, like, oh exactly. wow, like you're special. That's and, a stretch for me, but we'll see. Yeah, and Bayer needs to get his shit together. He was once upon a time a top three safety in the league, arguably. Let's see. You know, he's getting paid like one. So let's see if he can have a bounce back year. Um, they're they're going to be good. I just, what worries me is the offensive line. To be honest, I really love Taylor Luan. Shout out to their podcast. Amazing podcast. Um, Hope he can stay healthy, bro. Yeah, he needs to stay healthy. The only guy I really trust is Rogers, Roger Saffold. But I like Nate Davis too. You like Nate Davis? But you need you need Luan. He is the best player by far on the line. Yeah. And I think Derrick Henry, 2K again, I'm kind of leaning not against it just because they might pass the ball more. Yeah. And maybe you don't want to put that much wear and tear on him. And they got once upon a time. I know I'm using that, that phrase again, but they got Todd Downey, offensive coordinator this year. He was <laughs> the offensive coordinator for the Raiders. Um. I'm not a big fan of Todd Downey. He was he was a lot younger when he got that job with Jack Del Rio, but um, he's a question mark. Maybe maybe he just has too many weapons to pick from. Doesn't really know how to run an offense. That's that's something to look at with Todd Downey. I think you're right, man. Uh, I remember how your dis your displeasure at the time with him. Yeah, I, I it's a two race division, right? It's Colts or Titans in this one. I'd be really surprised if Jacksonville competed for this division. I think Jacksonville can be frisky, but they're a year away. And I think that's a good segue to the Colts. Yeah. Your Super Bowl contender. Colt. Big question mark is Carson Wentz's health. I'm not worried <laughs> about his play. I think he's going to play great. A lot of good really? reports out of camp. A lot of hatred towards the guy because he played bad last year. Uh, look, if he can stay healthy, he'll be good. I know that's a big if. I really don't know what to say. I feel like I'm all out of Carson Wentz like discussion because I've just yeah. been having it for a year and a half. Right. I never wanted him traded, but I knew it had to happen. You know, when when a whole city turns on you, you kind of got to go. Yeah. And I'll let you take it, bro. You, you can take the lead on this one. Um. Yeah. The the Colts are amazing, bro. Every everywhere but quarterback, they have a question mark. They were amazing last year. Um, for the offensive line, they they protected Phillip Rivers, which is a lot different that you can say for Carson Wentz in Philly. They only gave up 21 sacks last year. That was second in the NFL. Um, they can run the ball a lot. They have arguably three really good running backs. They got mm-hmm. the scat back in Naheem Himes. They got the workhorse in Jonathan Taylor. And they got a very underrated back, in my opinion, coming off injury in Marlon Mack. So they got very they good complement of skill sets. Very good yes, skill sets. Very. And they their defense, as good as it gets, they were they were plus 10 in turnovers last year, second in the NFL. So they get turnovers. And they it all starts with two guys. It's Darius Leonard and DeForest Buckner. Those two guys are some of the best defenders that we can say that we have in the league. And all the way around, they just have just great guys that compliment them. Grover Stewart, great guy that compliments. They got Quiddy Pay, a guy that fits their scheme perfectly that they He's drafted. He's popping, too. He yes. has preseason, but it's pop, And we I, we liked him. Yeah. And then they got Black. They got Julian Blackman, who we're big fans of. 
at the we safety We got a Kenny position. Moore bet on the season. We're we do got about. a Kenny Moore bet. Rocky Sin, another guy that I look for, that a guy that can make a leap. Like that's a guy that can play really big for them, who I think is is gonna move out of that slot position that he's been usually playing and really take really solidify that number one spot at corner. And Bobby o- uh Oriki, did I say it right? Yeah. Yeah. I like him a lot too. Another guy who could pop. I feel like he's like a poor man's Leonard, which yeah. is a good a good person to have on your team. Like I said, bro, just great players that compliment everything about this team they just have great great mixture of everything it's it's a credit to chris ballard um he he's amazing at just free agency and off season um putting together teams in general their offensive line go ahead they went from a very poorly run team that literally resulted in the retirement of andrew luck yeah to a very well-run team that has built his team through the trenches has good talent everywhere. I, I really don't know what else to say. Like, I remember some Michael of Pittman for luck. Yeah, Pittman's a good Paris Campbell. Yeah. If he can stay healthy, Doyle, maybe a little upgrade on tight end, but that's not super important. Yeah, but it, it really rides on Wentz. And I'm gonna ask you, what do you think? What do you think? Wentz, good year, bad year, injury year, and what's their? Uh, record? I I think they're gonna be good. As far as like, I think they're gonna get in the, to the playoffs. Wentz just scares me with his with his health. That's where it scares me. I, I obviously, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think he's going to be like horrible. Like, I don't think he's a, there's too much talent around him. There's too much great structure that he has to fail. And I think that's why the health of him is not even that big of a deal. Cause I have, I have confidence in Jacob Eason, a guy that, that they've been preparing to start week one. And I know Sam Ellinger just got hurt. They're not so that that competition's out the door. But if Wentz is not ready, I have confidence that Jacob Beeson can go out there and win some games for them. I it, really it, truly do believe that. It is a, stu- a tough start to the season. Seattle week one, two the Rams, week three Titans, week four Dolphins, week five Baltimore. Weeks three through five are all at or away games. Yeah, could be a tough start, but it kind of eases up. So maybe if Wentz isn't ready, you kind of bring him back against the Texans, get his feet yeah. under him. And then you're kind of off and running. Right. And um, I think news that came out later uh, last week was T.Y. Hilton. Something oh, un- T. undisclosed. Up? No. Yeah. Undisclosed injury. Every like always. fucking year with this guy, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I love the Colts. They're, they're one of those paper champs. On paper, they're freaking amazing. Stacked. They're so they're, solid everywhere. I think they just yeah. need a little more elite. One of the best too. built teams that we have. In, in in the NFL in general. If they were an NBA team, they would have traded for a superstar by now. Yeah. But that's all the divisions for AFC, man. Every team. Every, every team. team. We, we Yeah, we got a little bit of everything. We thought it was going to take about two hours. We appreciate you guys if you guys are still here watching us, man. We really greatly appreciate it, man. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Um, we're truly grateful for it, man. But before we let you guys go, we want to go for at least an hour and 30 minutes. Why not? You guys are here for an hour at? and 23. Hour and 23 oh, minutes. Let's go. Seven minutes? We can talk yeah, about seven, nothing for seven minutes. Seven minutes. Let's go over some awards that we have. Maybe some awards, some predictions, um, something bold, anything you want to say. So let's let's get over with some with some awards. We're going to do some awards this this episode, and then tomorrow on Sunday when we do the NFC, we'll finish off with some MVP or whatever we didn't do, okay, just to give you guys a little bit of dose of everything. Um, let's start off with Rookie of the Year. Is your Rookie of the Year in the AFC? I'm gonna. Can I give an offense and defense? Of course. Offense, I'm going to go Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. I, I I want to take Trevor Lawrence too, but if, <laughs> let's be real. It's going to be one of the quarterbacks, right? It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter your quarterback. Um, I don't really think so. You don't think it can be a running back? No, I don't think. ETN's gone and Najee ain't going to do enough. Also, think about Justin Jefferson to win it. He had his set of, like career yeah. mark. Yeah. I'll Is go there with any my defensive re- rookie of the year? 
I'll go Gregory Rousseau. Gregory Rousseau, Rousseau, really? Yeah. Okay. What about you? Um, I'm is trying he, to think of they, are they in the conference or maybe some NFC love? I'm I'm, I'm looking towards more of the receivers. So we got Jamar Chase, who's another rookie that we have. Is there anyone that you can think of? I'm blanking out on our oh, so we got Devontae Smith. Jamar Chase, maybe Kyle Pitts. Watch you out for want, Kyle Pitts. But you want NFL? Yeah, I thought you want AFC stuff. Yeah, AFC. Yeah, I'll tell you right now. Yeah, please do that for me. Jalen uh, Waddle. Ooh, I like that one. I like Jalen Waddle. Bateman, because he's he's gonna get a lot of pro- he's gonna get a lot of production. Jalen right, Waddle, yeah. but he might but, not make it through the year. Yeah. Like well. <sighs> On the AFC side, I'm going to go with Jamar Chase. I'm going to stick with really? it. Gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go I'm gonna go a little bit off the board, and I'm going to go Jamar Chase for the AFC. Okay? I really do think someone else is going to win it, but they're in the NFC, but we'll keep it all AFC right now. So we'll go best rookie out of the AFC, in my opinion, if they had that award. Jamar Chase. I'm going to go with that. And then on defense... Oh man, on what defense. What about Pay or Caleb Farley? Caleb Farley is going to be tough for a corner to win it. Mm, yeah, man. Maybe a line. But maybe JOK. I'm, yeah, I'm going to go with JOK. Michael, what about Michael Parsons though? Yeah, on the NFC though. Stick AFC. So I, oh, I'm, wait, I'm, I'm, yeah. So I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to go uh, JOK. I like the Browns. Picks. I like them. They're very. They're very you. Yeah. Can I can I give my next award? Yeah. Who's your tea bag team and tea bag player? <laughs> tea bag team. Go with the Texans. Uh, I hate you. I'm gonna go with the Jags. And for tea bag player or coach. You want to do a coach too? Tea bag coach? Oh yeah, it's coach Urban Myers. Yeah, I call him. I got it. Yeah. David Cully. <laughs> I want an Urban Meyer. I'm trying to think of a tea bag player though. Can't pick AB because he's on the AFC or <laughs> NFC. Excuse me. Uh, uh, let me think. Let me think. T bag player. I'm gonna go. Man, he's on the NFC too. I'll save that. Oh man, Big this Ben. Is, ooh, that's a good one. That's a really, really good one. Um, I'm gonna go with. Uh, come on, Juan. Think I'm trying to stay away from the Texans and the and the Jags because they're just so teabaggish. Trying to think, is there any other teabags out there? Um, let's go with whoever the kicker is for the Chargers. That's gonna be the teabag player. <laughs> Charger special teams teabag unit. All right. Like yeah, like I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with the Chargers kicker. All right. And then if Drew Lock played, I probably would have picked Drew Lock. Oh, but... I should have picked Teddy B. <laughs> Damn. Oh man. So we'll give a little bit more uh, on Sunday tomorrow. We'll go a little bit more in depth. We'll pick our MVPs and all that in that one. Is there anything else? Any bold takes? Any crazy stuff that you want to predict right now? This is your chance for the AFC wise. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, kind of caught me off guard. Uh, Texans 16 to no, 17 to no. <laughs> no. Are you kidding? Uh, you want to predict that? No, legit prediction. Like this will be a clip on Instagram. Are you calling 0 and 17 for the Houston Texans? Yeah. Fuck yeah. I'll do it. Oh, and seven yeah. Texans, you guys suck. You want to put some on it? We fight all bet. Hopefully, win week one. Let's do another. We got to think of some more bets, bro. We I'll, got to think buy of a Raiders jersey for myself. Oh, my no, goodness. I won't. <laughs> I won't. I shan't. Well, I'll, let's think of a bet. We can put it on the next one. Yeah, we'll put it on the next one, but I like that one. Um, my bold prediction I'm going to say Cam Newton doesn't go signed, unsigned. No, I'm gonna go. I kind of have my bold prediction with the Ravens, but that was really good. That was a good, yeah. One. But I'm gonna go with 
Mm, I'm going to say that Trevor Lawrence throws for 4,000 yards. Wow. That's and cool. LaVishka Chanel gets 1,000 yards receiving at least. I feel like if they do that, though, they'll be good. I don't think so. There's a lot and of late games. You can still be ball. bad. You can still be bad and throw for 4,000. How about this? Look, How about this? Kirk Cousins, bro. How about this? <laughs> Give me the odds Urban Meyer last more than a year. Oh, that okay. I'm going to switch that. Both coaches, David Cully and Urban Myers, get fired after one year. Both take. I'm going to go like that. Dude, if, if Urban Meyer gets canned, that's fucking crazy. Let me ask Cole more. This has been a topic I've heard every, everywhere. What are the chances Gruden makes it the year? I think he's making it regardless. Have, unless it's got to be catastrophic. Yeah. yeah, it has to be bad. I don't even think so. I think you have to win... Two games for him to get fired. And he, even if he wins four, he's staying. Yeah, Guarantee it. Too. It's it's way he's Mark Mark Davis is way too invested in John Gruden. There's I no think way. So too. Yeah. It should be the right thing to do, but it won't happen. Something Maybe like Mayock. Said, catastrophic. Maybe Mayock. Maybe Mayock. I can see that. Maybe Mayock, like he hits the canner. Like John Gruden's like, Yeah, this is not working out. Yeah. So we'll see about picks. that. Yeah, fuck you. But dude, All right. we had a good time. <laughs> We oh, great time, time bro. Like hour 40? Yeah. So we'll be back tomorrow. All right, guys. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, football season is here, bro. We're only a couple, what, a week away? We're a week away, man. We're less than a week. We're like five days, four days? Uh, Well, Sunday. We'll count it as Sunday. But, yeah, a couple days away if you want to say the, the oh, opener. Yeah. But yeah, we're we're super close, man. We appreciate you guys rocking with us. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, uh, follow us on Instagram, all that good stuff. That is at Max underscore Juan Cass. Uh, Max, any last words? Can't wait for football, bro. Are you ready for some football? Are you ready? <laughs> Let's go. Yes, sir. And we out. Peace. Peace.